We're gonna look at a few more tests for Apple's M1 chip, and it's still pretty fast. All right, so if you've been watching my videos, you know my last couple of videos have been on Apple's new M1 chip, and we've been looking at the Geek Geekbench 5 scores, and they were really, really high. One thing that came up from that is a lot of people keep texting me or they actually, you know, post messages. They're saying, well, Geek Geekbench 5 may not be the best way to rate this. Let me see some other tests. Is it really this fast? Is the M1 chip as fast as they say it is? How does it compare to other mobile type chips? So what we're gonna do in this video, and this will probably be the last in this series. I'm not gonna do any more speed tests on the M1 chip after this. But what I wanna do in this video is just, let's go ahead and run some other, well, not us, but let's, I actually went out and found some other tests. They've already been run by some really good websites out there, so we're just gonna take a look at what they came back with, with the M1 chip. You know, how fast is it compared to some popular Intel chips, and how fast is it, you know, compared to some popular Ryzen chips, which is, again, those are what people are putting in the comments. So I figured I'd kinda of try to clear that up and show you about where they kinda of hash out. Um, so what we're gonna do is, you know, the Cinebench R23 is one of the ones that came up. We're gonna run, you know, I'm gonna show you what that kind of compares the M1 chip against some other chips there. And then we'll also do some, some real-time browser type testing. It's um, some benchmarks. I'll show you what those are in a second. And, uh, and then I think it's gonna be like a G-Zip, Parallels G-Zip test as well. So just some other tests to show you how fast the M1 chip is. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. I promise this will probably be the last one in this, this series of how fast is the M1 chip. Keep in mind that this is just the base model of Apple's chip out there. It's really just a base model. So it's only gonna get faster. And here we are comparing it to some non-base models. And you'll see in a second, you know, it's still pretty quick. It's not gonna be maybe as fast as initially everyone thought, but what you're paying and for what this is gonna be doing, really conserving power, 20 hours of battery life in the Pro, you know, you can't complain with this. So let's go ahead and take a look at these tests. Let's go. All right, so I wanna show everyone, this is gonna actually be coming from Ars Technica, and this is gonna be a uh, article by Jim Salter. So just wanna give them credit for it. So long story short though, this is what I talked about, you know, on my other video, check out my other video, it's the Geekbench 5. It scored about a 1725 on that, which is really good. If you look at it versus the i7, these are some other mobile chips here. An i7, 11, well it's 1185 G7, it's a mouthful, but it's 28 watts. That's only 1611, and then we have the i7 down here with 15 watts, which is a little bit more comparable to the Apple chip. That's only 1608. And then Ryzen 7 down here is only about 1126 on this scale. This is the single-threaded score. If you look over here, this is gonna be the multi-threaded. You can see again, 60, uh, I'm sorry, 7461, and then all the way down. So we already covered this, so let's look at some new benchmarks to see what that looks like. All right, so let's look at our first test here. So this is gonna be a Cinebench 23 score, and this is this, this uh, website here is called CPU Monkey. <laughs> it's actually cpu-monkey.com. And I just wanted to show you what they have it at here at the Cinebench score is the Apple M1 7508. This is the multi-core, multi multi-threaded. So it's the Apple M1, here it is. So if you look at this, I mean, this is gonna basically be for the Cinebench score at least, it's gonna be around the Ryzen 5 here. There's an i7 down here, i7 10 8050H, so we're kind of in this range, you know, i5 9600KF, um, just to give you kind of perspective. So it's, you know, this is going to be, again, a base model chip, you know, more or less, and it's it's doing pretty well up against these i7s. You know, you'd probably spend a little bit more on, on a Mac computer with the i7 in there, so just keep that in, you know, in the, take that with a grain of salt is what I'm saying, because it's doing fairly well here, even though it may not look like it. All right, and now here's Ars Technica again, and let's just go ahead and show you their Cinebench 23 scores. This is gonna just show you what it is compared to some other CPUs on here. So for the Apple, this is gonna be multi-threaded score. Apple M1 chip, 7804. Here's the i7, 1185G7, 28 watts. It's only 6264. The Ryzen 7 4700U, 15 watts. Well, 6874, and then the Ryzen 9, actually look at that, that does beat it, but I mean, the Ryzen 7 doesn't, and that's, that's, that's a pretty big uh, outcome for a small M1 chip, which is the starting chip. Um, this is gonna be single-threaded again, 1520 on the Apple M1. Ryzen 9 beats it by a little bit, but the Apple M1 beats the i7 and the Ryzen 7 here by quite a bit, so at least for the Ryzen 7 it does. So that's basically what this is showing you here. Cinebench R23 CPU test as well. You can see how it compares to the Ryzen 9, which is pretty impressive. All right, so this next one is gonna be the browser benchmark suites. And you can see the Apple M1 here. This is, the orange basically is in Safari, and then the Apple M1 in Google Chrome is the blue here. And then this purple is the Ryzen 4700U. 
in Chrome. You can see the major difference. First of all, the M1 between Safari and between Chrome. It does tell you to use Safari with this. It's so much optimized for it. You're gonna get way better just browser experience and, and just kind of basic application experience. Look at this, the higher is better. And then these are the test Jetstream 2.0. And then down here, you can see the other test that's running. But you can see the major difference. So if you're using the browser that's actually made for this chip, and then all down here is the Ryzen 4700U, and it beats that as well. So that's pretty impressive. And then the final test is the parallel GZIP compression test. One process per CPU thread presented, and it's mega, megabytes per second. Um, what we want to do is here's the Apple M1 right here. You can see it. Um, the Ryzen 7 4700U, so it's very similar. And then the Ryzen 7 3700X, this is the desktop version, is going to be a little bit better there. But you can see that this is holding its own against all these CPUs. And uh, for the starting chip, again, that's what I'm saying, it's going to be really good. Again, this article is by Jim Salter, it's from Ars Technica, and they did a good job of putting this together. Anyway, so what did you think? It's still pretty fast, huh? And I promise I won't do too much more testing on this. Hopefully this will be the last video like this. Just wanted to show people, you know, everyone's thinking, should I get this? Obviously you run into the whole issue of, you know, do you want to be the first one getting Apple Silicon? I've heard, you know, from some big channels that there's a couple little bugs in some software you'll see. Um, some things may not be working correctly and some things still have to work off of, you know, it's not basically optimized for the new M1 chip. So you might want to wait a year iteration here before you actually pick up the M1 if you already have one. I mean, I, I wouldn't jump right in on it just because it's this fast. Um, you know, wait a little while, see, let all the bugs get taken out, let the, all the software bugs get taken out, let it be optimized. When it's optimized, it's really fast. When it's not, it's still fast, but it's not going to, you know, hit these numbers that you're seeing here. So maybe wait about a year, six months or so, just to let things get hashed out here is my advice on everything. Anyways, you know, I just wanted to go ahead and show someone just one more video on this just to show you exactly how fast this can be. And uh, definitely if you could help me out, support my channel, and I, you know, I make things on a whole bunch of Apple stuff. I do things on PC as well and a whole bunch of technology like hard drives, SSDs, everything else in between. So just let me know. Um, post things in the comment if you want to see something. Still using this crazy mic because I'm in the midst of my other mic broke, so trying to use this for some better sound right now. Um, but I'll get that fixed soon. I'll talk to everyone soon. Peace.